This is the Business Growth Hacks Podcast, presented by Beefy Marketing. Here's your host, Andrew Brockenbush. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. We've got a great guest in store for you guys. John, I'm so glad to be doing another show with you, man. It is Always. better than the alternative, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, were joking, we were joking with the guests before we got on that if we could podcast all day, every day, it's probably what we would do with our time. So uh, if there's anybody out there listening and want to sponsor us to do podcasts all day, every day, hey, we'll yeah. even do content for you. Uh, you guys just hit us up, send us a message, follow us on Instagram, you know, all the fun stuff. Hey guys, we have a great guest in store for you guys. Chandler Bolt is the author of Publish the Proven Path from Blank Page to 10,000 Copies Sold as a seven-time best-selling author and CEO of Self Publishing School and selfpublishing.com. Chandler knows exactly how instrumental writing books can be in sharing your message and even growing and scaling your business. His message is that you can't wait for the perfect time in life to get writing. The perfect time is always right now. Yeah. Chandler, welcome to the show, man. Andrew, John, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. So I think that, you know, unfortunately we had to miss our first time that we had scheduled with you, you know, a few months back, but I'm so glad we got a chance to finally sit down and talk because we like have all like, we've had all of our questions ready for like some time. We've been excited to chat with you because we actually have a lot of clients who come to us with either an idea to write a book or they've written a book and they don't know like what to do next. And then there's people like me who think, well, maybe I should write a book because it would be a great lead magnet, but I'm also not that interesting. So <laughs> where do we start? So uh, I'm super excited to have you. We like to kick things off with a bit of an icebreaker. So uh, let's do that first. All right. So today's icebreaker question for you, Chandler. What was your favorite book when you were a kid? Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, kid, kid. Uh... But no, I'll just go. When I was 16, my dad gave me a copy of the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh, yeah, and great book. It changed my yeah. life forever. I mean, it, it it showed me what I now wholeheartedly believe in that books change lives. Like that yeah. book changed my life. So books change the lives of readers. And then books change the lives of authors. Right. And I discovered that at, later, where we always say it's not about the book, it's about who you become in the process of writing and publishing that book. And so that was one of my favorite books, I guess, 16 kid. Ish. Yeah. Um, How old are you right now? If you don't mind us asking. Yeah. 29, 29, 29. So, uh, you know, I'm 32 and I'm going to let my real kid side show because I know that that's an incredible book, but I'll be honest, man. I was like much later in life when I started reading those kind of books and I realized like the power of what books could do for you from a business perspective. But I was a bit of a, like a little nerd. I, uh, I liked Hank the cow dog. I okay. liked, uh, the Caroline B. Cooney books. Okay. Um, Captain I'd say, yeah, the Captain Underpants, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Tuesday, Tuesdays with Maury was actually one of the first like serious books that I, I okay. read whenever I was growing up that was like pretty sad and it was like a great book. And then my favorite business book is actually a book called The Automatic Customer, which is all about oh, cool. uh, like subscription based business models. And that's yeah. one of my, my all time favorites. Great book. So, it's a great book. John, how about you, man? Willow? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So. The first book that I ever really liked was The Giving Tree. My mom used to read it to me like every I was going to say so that same book. I love that book. Yeah. It's the best yeah. book ever written. It's yes, a great I story. Agree. It's I agree. funny and it has depth to it, you know? Yes. Um, I also used to like, you remember those Wayside Stories books with the weird school and the teacher? You know what I'm talking about, Andrew? I don't, I don't know if I do or not. I know it was part of like a reading in school, so I thought maybe you would remember it. I probably <laughs> did at some point, right? Yeah. And then the, the encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah. I honestly started reading this encyclopedia from a very young age. Just random facts fascinated me. I don't know. I would read every book. Like I'd pick a letter on Saturday morning and go through the whole thing. Like I wouldn't read it cover to cover per se, but pick out everything that I really liked and read every page about that. <laughs> That's, That's cool. I was mm. always actually a fan of books and I don't know for you guys. I mean, we're all kind of similar in age, but our school had this like, I think it was called like the 600 minutes reading club where like yeah. if during the summer you like logged your book reading hours, you'd get like free right. tickets to like something, whether it was like the local Mexican restaurant or like six like, flags yeah. or something, you know? 
Uh, so did y'all have anything like that when you were growing up? Oh yeah, we had that. We had that for sure. I mean, I think I was in the zero minutes reading club. I'm like, it's summer. I ain't reading. I'm not reading anything. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing. Um, I'll see you you guys in the fall. Um, Right. I don't think I ever made it in any of those clubs, but they certainly had them. (laughs) You know, my, my favorite thing actually growing up that I, I miss as an adult because like we don't get to experience this anymore is like the scholastic book fair. Like where they would bring, and it wasn't even about the books for me at that point, because like I didn't, I mean, I read books, but I did not care necessarily about reading books, but they always had like the cool, like chemistry kits and like the, you know, like it was like all these random toys that you could buy at your school. And I was like, this stuff is really, and I've always, you know, the school store. They, exactly, like the little bookstore, school store. Yeah. Spirit store. That's what it's called. That's what they're called. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, we, we have really been looking forward to this conversation and you you've published over seven books yourself. Is that right? Uh, yes. Just published the seventh one. Yep. Just, just the seventh. So published book launch, how not to suck mm-hmm. at writing your first book, the productive mm-hmm. person action guide, the productive mm-hmm. person, productivity hacks for entrepreneurs and breaking out of a broken system. Like I think that that's kind exactly. of like your lineup, right? Yeah. So, and- and there's, there's, it's a little confusing, but the most recent one is published second edition and there's a first edition. Got it. Okay, um, yeah. cool. <clears throat> now, how old were you when you writ- wrote your first book? 19. Okay. So when I was 19, I was not writing books. I wasn't, you know, I was doing a lot of things that were fun <laughs> and writing books was not one of them. What sparked that interest or what even made you go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to write a book. Yeah. I think, you know, it really started as my brother and I had this conversation and we, we had realized that, you know, our parents taught us all these things growing up that we thought were normal. And then we got out in the real world and realized that no one gets taught this stuff. Um, and my brother's, he plays in a Grammy nominated rock and roll band and a pretty nice. big band. And they're, they're, they're on tour at the time. And we were, we were talking. It's like, man, how does no one know this stuff? Like we just thought everyone knew this stuff. Yeah. And we said, Hey, maybe we should write a book about this and we'll do these 15 things your perspective as a musician, my perspective as a business guy. So kind of right, le- right brain, left brain, showing that these common 15 things can really help any type of person. Uh, and yeah. so that's what we did. It was a project for charity. It was just a fun kind of passion project. Did that book on the heels of that, did another book. Those books did pretty well. The, I dropped out of school, um, not because of the books, because I got tired of learning how to run a business from professors who have never ran businesses. Mm, yeah. That made no sense. Um, yeah. and, and I was running businesses and I was learning way more doing the actual businesses. And so I dropped out. And then when I dropped out, I was working on a business that was just failing. I mean, just pretty miserably. Um, and th- But then people kept asking about this book stuff. They're like, hey, how are you doing this? And I would get on the phone for an hour just to be a nice person and yeah. just say, hey, do this, do this, do this. Didn't charge him anything. Good luck. Right. And then, did, you know, you do that so many times, it's like you, you can only get smacked in the face so many times before you turn around and look. And you're and like, you wait turn a second. Look, yeah. And there's this whole <laughs> line of people that won't help with yeah. that thing. Right. And so that kick started what became self publishing school and self publishing.com. And then, uh, to make a long story longer, um, fast forward <laughs> to today, and, you know, we've published about 6,000, 6, 7,000 books um, wow. so, through our authors that we've worked with. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive, man. So I'd imagine most yeah. people we talk to, and I'd imagine the same for you. It sounds like at 19 you wrote your first book, which means you had already started kind of on your entrepreneurship journey yes. early on. I mean, were you an entrepreneur even in high school, or was it like fresh out of high school you started kind of working on your own stuff? Uh, yeah, middle school, high school, um, probably high school. Um, I always joke that it started selling snacks at Scout Camp. My mom sent me to Scout Camp with a boatload of snacks and drinks. And I came home with a switchblade knife and a wad of cash. (laughs) Yeah, man. (laughs) I'd I'd sold, sold most of my stuff. Um, but then, uh, ran a, uh, landscape and lawn care and pressure washing business in high school and then a house painting business in college. And then that was the first time I hit six figures with a business. And so that kind of gave me the confidence to say, hold up, I'm learning more by doing than I am by uh, showing up to class. That's cool, man. That's really cool. So That's so cool, yeah. You've obviously, I mean, you've been a part of 6,000 plus, you said 6,000, right? Books that you've been a part of the publishing yes, process? At that's, least, that's, it, that we can ins- track. It's, that you could track. It's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a lot, man. So why don't you break down really quick? You know, the publishing process is pretty, it can be pretty daunting in terms of like, 
there's a lot of ways you can go. You've got hybrid publishers, you've got traditional publishers, you've got self-publishing. Can you kind of just give the listeners just like a little synopsis of kind of like the different publishing methods or the types of publishing available for authors? Totally. So you nailed it. There's kind of three main paths. There's traditional publishing, there's hybrid publishing, there's self-publishing, right? And so it used to be that the only way you could sell books was to get into bookstores, right? The only way that you could get into bookstores was to have a publishing deal. The only way you have a publishing deal was to have an agent and, 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 right? And so there's all these gatekeepers. If you want to even publish a book, much less sell a book. Um, But now over 70% of all books sold are sold on Amazon and other online book retailers, right? And so, and you don't need a publisher to publish on Amazon. So that has really kicked off this rise of self-publishing. And then I like to think that we have been kind of flying the flag, le- running into battle <laughs> um, uh, with traditional <laughs> publishers saying, hey, there's a better way. And we want to put the power back in the hands of authors um, and help them retain their IP, make more money in royalties. Like there's all these benefits to it. Um, and so that's why self-publishing has kind of become the preferred option for most authors. Um, a secondary choice for some people is like, hybrid publishing and even some traditional publishing is kind of like leaning towards hybrid which is just kind of exactly what it sounds it's like a little bit in the middle it can range from yeah. predatory to really you know solid marketing and good distribution and decent royalty rates like it's kind of a spectrum there uh, but without going too in the nitty-gritty that probably a lot of people don't care about <laughs> um mm-hmm. i'd say that's like the big picture view yeah yeah you're you're, you're hitting it right on the nail you know because I think a lot of people are intimidated by the fact that there is like this preconceived notion that you still have to take that approach, right? Like, oh, if I want to write a book, I I have to have a big enough story and I have to have a big enough of a following. And it's it's almost like the old I mean, it's it's honestly, there's a lot of parallels between this industry and the music industry. Yes. Um, My my first it's funny. My first ever business, actually, how me and John really became really close friends was uh, in 2008. 2009 I was just out of high school I was your age I was 19 and I actually did open my first business it was a recording studio we actually took a house and we converted it into a studio so the front of the house is a recording studio the back of the house is where we like lived so like we John lived in the kitchen I lived in like some formal dining room and the front of the house was a recording studio and we, we realized eventually that like hey this industry is not for us at least in the capacity that we were in it because right it was evolving even then to where to where we're at now right where Mm -hmm. artists now have the power right like i'm a texas country music fan and there's a a great a great artist that's kind of local here a guy named cody johnson and he held out forever from going with like kind of the traditional label approach right Mm -hmm. because he wanted to be able to control his creative style his music his you know lyrical choices all of those things that a lot of times that you know negative things with working with like a traditional publisher or a traditional label yeah. is that a lot of stuff you start to lose a lot of creative control and royalties yes. and, and and all the ands yes. you talked about right mm-hmm. and so i do think that the the average person listening to this episode especially a business owner would think like yeah i've thought about writing a book it sounds like a good idea but like you know where do i get started and how much is that going to cost me what's that going to set me back and how much am i going to lose you know because amazon takes a, a chunk you know they like to take their piece um you know i know one of the things that you really kind of preach and you talk about with your audience is to just write a book, to just get started. Um, why do you think that most people, and I'm, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say all people, but why do you think most people, uh, it, it is a good idea to write a book? Yeah. Um, well, and, and, and I'll backtrack a little bit. Now I said, yeah, it's, it's fun seeing the parallels in our journey. Cause oh, yeah. <laughs> I've lived what you're talking about firsthand with the, with the music industry through my brother and he had a recording studio uh, nice. And went to full sale and same. Uh, did, oh, nice. so did that's, that. where, that's where my degrees at. Bro. That's hilarious. <laughs> no way, bro. man. Yeah. Small and then done the whole like I lived in the external uh, sunroom and it's like there's that's the awesome. studio, there's his <laughs> room, there's yeah. the sunroom and the, the, the his band yeah. and they're all the time recording. And so, great, so we've bro. lived uh, we've Very lived similar. parallel lives. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but so why should people write a book? So. Uh, you know, I think there's there's a few different buckets, right? There's some people who are like, hey, I want to grow my business. Mm-hmm. I think a book is one of the best ways you can grow your business. We'll probably go deep on that because I think Absolutely. that's what people who are listening care about uh, here, right? Um, there's, hey, this is part of my legacy. Long after I'm off this earth, this book's still going to be here. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's important to me. 
a lot of our customers fall in that bucket, right? Um, and then there's some people who are like, hey, I, I have this passion for writing and I want to build a career as an author. Maybe I'm writing nonfiction. Maybe I'm writing fiction. Maybe like I've always had this dream to write this novel. Um, and we help a bunch of people with that too. But I'd say the business piece, like specifically this audience is I look at how do you use a book to get more leads, sales, and referrals. Um, and and how do you strategically structure something so that it's going to grow your business? Yeah, that's what I've done with my book and and with my business, and that's what we teach a lot of people to do. Yeah, that that's cool. So when it comes to when it comes to scaling your business, because that's obviously who we're talking to, why do you recommend books say over things like I don't know podcasts or video content or social media, yeah. or or do you? I mean, is it? Yeah, how do you how do you look at that? I think it's it, it, it's the wind at the back of everything that you do. Um, and so it, is it, is it time intensive and is it a major short-term sacrifice? No doubt. Like it's, but it's, it, you're, it's short-term sacrifice to create a long-term asset. And so I look at, all right, now I, I spend the time and the hard work to create this book. And then I'll, I'll, we'll circle back to the structuring because I've got very specific stuff that I think people will be interested in on structuring it to get more leads, sales, and referrals. So it's actually a six or seven figure revenue stream for your business. Um, and so, so th there's that, but then not only th is there that, but like, then you have this core piece of content that you can use to be the wind at the back of blog posts, of video, like you've already done the hard work to structure all these frameworks, all this written content. I mean, you can repurpose and use that, um, to, you know, to ex accelerate all of your content marketing. You use that as an excuse to go, go out and do podcast interviews, go out and do PR, like all these things that you know, just feedback um, to the business. Yeah. So I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second. Yeah. Right. Course, I feel yeah, like, love that. I feel like me as a business owner and probably the majority of business owners out there are saying, I don't have enough time. Right. Like, yes, I, I've got so much on my plate already. You know, I, I need an assistant. I haven't hired an assistant yet. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm struggling to balance work and personal life. I need a vacation. I need a break from my business. And you're telling me that yeah. here's another thing that's going to make my business be successful. You know, what, what is your feedback for those kind of people? Because, I mean, obviously, it's not like you're just sitting on your thumb, right? Like, you've yeah. got a lot on your plate as well, and you're clearly doing it. Yeah. I'd say t the two or three very specific things I'd say there is, um, I, I think, you, you know, number one is, well, number one, I did it. <laughs> um, so right. I, I'm in there. I'm in your shoes. And, and it, you know, I, I picked up the pen on September 1st of last year and I published that book on December 15th. It's my newest book published. Um, and this was while I had 30, 30 or 40 something employees um, running an eight figure company. Like, so I wanted to show that it could be done at the highest level. Then there's, this is I think an excuse that everyone has, which is never a good time to write a book and you will never have time to write a book. So if you're waiting for time to write a book, um, it's just never gonna happen. You're gonna have to get started before you're ready. You're not going to find the time. You're going to make the time, right? And then there's uh, what I think uh, is quite, quite possibly uh, the 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 most important piece. Um, so you know we've already, like, hey, there's never going to be the right time. There's all this, but a lot of people that you're talking about is they're stuck in that place because they're going one to one, and you yeah. need to go from one to one to one to many. And to do that, you need leverage, and to build. Le I call a book leveraged impact because you do the hard work once and now this takes you from one to one to one to many mm. and it can actually save you all that time it brings in better customers higher paying customers especially if you're writing on the topic of your book maybe you feel like a broken record in your business and you just keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again well the best way to stop talking about that thing is to write a book on it and then point to that book and it'll be the best thing you ever do to grow your business especially if it's sales objections great write on that have people read the book before they talk to you. And then now you're spending less time talking to unqualified prospects and more time talking to people who are saying, I want to do business with you, right? Or maybe you're writing it on your frameworks and process. And so they read the book. They, they say, hey, I want to work with, with Andrew and John. Well, now I, your onboarding process is so much easier because I've already read the book. <laughs> I believe in it. I know how you do things. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Just I, I know the process. Just tell me what to do um, or just take it away. Um, and so you're yeah. spending less time convincing people to work with you, you're spending less time, uh, you know, onboarding. It saves you time, your team time, all that stuff. Yeah, that totally makes sense. You know, 
you know, one of the things that I get, I'll, I'll be vulnerable for a second, that I struggle with is that I feel like there's kind of three types of business leaders. You've got your business leaders who I consider like, um, like true thought leaders in their, you know, respective fields. And when I say they're thought leaders, I mean that they have done the research themselves or maybe with the support of their team. And they're like the source of knowledge. People like Gary Vaynerchuk or Russell Brunson, people that have these teams who've done a lot of research, due diligence, and then they bring out a big idea to the to the rest of the world. And everyone's like, holy crap, that's a great idea. Let's run with it, right? So there's those folks. There's people like me who I consider myself this kind of second person, which we could call us like, you know, um, ambassadors, where I learn from those big guys, like these top level people. So I'm learning from Gary V and, you know, all these other thought leaders. And I take that information and I put my own spin on it. And I, you know, I interpret that data and I put it to use and I go, oh, that part worked, that part did, that part didn't. And I form my own ideas. But to some extent, my ideas are not original, right? Like they're just a hybrid between what I've learned and what I'm doing in my own business or for my clients. And then I think the third group of business leaders are people who they're kind of like, I don't want to say at the bottom of this kind of food chain, but they're really just out there just doing work, right? Like they're not, they're not necessarily learning anything new or they're not the ones coming up with the new research. Maybe they've like been passed this knowledge down from generation to generation and they're just continuing to like head down, just do the work. And so as that guy that kind of lives in the middle there, as I sit down and think, okay, what am I going to write about? I sometimes feel like, um, like a fraud, I guess you could call it, right? Where I'm like, I don't feel like I'm necessarily this massive thought leader like Gary Vaynerchuk, which obviously I'm not. Like this dude's a massive brand. But at the same time, I do feel like I have knowledge and expertise that I could share with people. Clearly, I wouldn't be running a business at to the scale or to the level I do if people didn't trust my expertise. But how do you kind of avoid those fears or how do you kind of get around it? How do you come up with fresh ideas to create a book and not feel like a fraud? Yeah, it's a great question. I think this is something that, thank you for sharing that because I feel like that's something that a lot of people struggle with, right? And it's it's this feeling, that, you know, I was in Seattle as a kid and my, I remember we were on a trip one time and we were hanging our packs up in a tree. And, and I asked my scoutmaster, I'm like, why are we hanging our packs up in a tree? And he said, well, that's because there's bears and we don't want them to get our food, right? And I said, well, hold up. What happens if we run into a bear? Uh, and, <laughs> and what happens if we see a bear? And he said, well, Chandler, you don't, if, if, we, if, we, if you get chased by a bear, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than your friend. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. and it's like okay well, what does this have to do with, with what you just asked or writing a book is when it comes to writing a book you don't have to know everything you don't have to be gary v or the next oprah or uh, you know whoever else you just have to know a little bit more than the person that you're teaching mm -hmm. right yeah. and i think that's the thing that i found comfort in especially early on and even to this day uh, but is there will be people that would never read a book by Brene brown or or, For sure. you know, Gary V or whoever else, but they would read your book. And it might be the only book that they ever read all year because they relate to you, your story. And I think the mm -hmm. best book are the best books are books that are, uh, you know, from people who are one or two steps ahead of us. Right. Because it feels yeah. relatable. Um, and so yeah. that, that would be my encouragement is, you know, every most things have already been said, but there's a unique way, a unique message and a unique um, perspective that you have and that most people have that they can use to, to tell their story and write their book in a helpful way. Yeah, that, that, that's a good thought. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think I've thought about that before, but it's always nice to be reminded, you know, that it's like, yeah. hey, like you have your own way of communicating things. People like you because they like you, right? Like I tell people all the time, like people yeah. buy from people, not pe people don't buy from businesses. They buy from the people mm -hmm. that run those businesses. So it's like, absolutely. That totally makes sense. So I think that like now's a good time to kind of pivot to the conversation of like, structure and you know kind of the process because one of the most intimidating pieces to me is probably staring at a blank page and having to start writing right so obviously i think this is probably where you guys have like really kind of ironed out some of the the details in this part of the process uh, or you wouldn't be doing what you're doing and we wouldn't be talking about what we're talking about so can you talk a little bit about that yeah so i i teach a process i call this the more writing method and really, it's, it's a, it's a four-step process to get your book done. And so MORE is an acronym. It stands for Mind Map, Outline, Rough Draft, and Editing, right? 
And so that, that kind of makes the, the process a lot easier. I, we, we break it down. This is in, um, let's see, it's page 17 of the book. It's also in the Amazon listing. If people just want to go there and see this image that I'm talking about, because I know most people listening to the podcast can't actually see this. But there's eight milestones for going from blank page to published um, with your book. And those are the first four, right? So mind map, outline, rough draft, and editing, it all starts with that mind map. And to get super practical, if you're listening to this right now, uh, as soon as you're done listening to this podcast, um, take 15 minutes, grab a blank sheet of paper, write your book topic in the page, the thing that you're kind of the kernel of an idea, the thing that you could write about, and then set a timer for 15 minutes and write out everything that you can think of on that topic, right? So stories that you have, lessons that you've learned, broken record conversations, um, set a timer for, for 15 minutes and go. And at the end of that, you'll probably realize that you've got so much more that you can write about than you think, right? And, uh, and, and, and that kickstarts the process and that makes it much easier. Now you use that to create your outline. You use the outline to write your book one chapter at a time. Mm-hmm. That's a, I think that's a great place to start for sure, right? Just write, so, like, put, like yeah. you said, put something on paper, right? Just, just get down, started. Yeah. Um, so... Obviously, I'm sure the book really helps. I mean, how 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 deep does the book go into the process, into you know the the entire white writing process, the publishing process? I mean, how deep do you get in the book? My new book? Yeah, the new book. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, it's it's meant to be a standalone thing that, and that's when I gave you that number six thousand, six seven thousand books. Um, those are people that we can track that have like paid uh, to work with us, right? There's hundreds, right. if not thousands of people that have, I, I, I know, and I've, they tell me all the time, it's like, I read your book and I wrote a book and published a book, just reading your book. I didn't even work with you. So That's my goal awesome. is to make this thing a standalone. Um, and, it, and, and hopefully it's so good that the people who can't afford to work with us can um, say, oh, awesome. Like, I want to work with you. <laughs> um, and yeah, the people sure. who can't, they say, great, this is really helpful. I'm going to use this and I'm going to implement it. So that's the power of book, right? Um, you put your best foot Absolutely. forward and, and you right. make it standalone valuable, which I think is a very important asterisk. Um, a lot of people who write books to grow their businesses, it's just a glorified sales pitch, um, yep. which sucks. I read yeah. that book and now I don't like you. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, <laughs> this guy sucks. Um, <laughs> I don't want to do business with him. This this was a waste of my time, right? So I, my philosophy is give away all of your best stuff for free uh, and yeah. people will pay you to tell it to them again, mm-hmm. right? Or they'll yeah. pay you to do it for them. Yeah. Right? And so that's, that's, what, that's yeah. what we do. I love that. That's I mean, I really, about. the part of your whole message so far that I'm like really like just, you know, like whenever you talk to somebody and you have ADHD, there's just like one piece that just like stands out in your head, okay, you know, um, like the visualization <laughs> in my head right now is just like that whole moving from one to one to one to many, yes. you know, concept. Because I think that, I've never really thought about it that way. I mean, again, if I bring up Russell Brunson again, you've got these new wave of like internet marketers who are kind of promoting this whole like, you know, free plus shipping offer on a book. And really it's just like, just a, like you said, like a glorified sales offer or a lead mm-hmm. magnet. And it's, and the idea mm-hmm. is to really just upsell you to something else. And it's like, well, was that really value led or was mm. that, was that just a pitch right. for something yeah. else? Right. And I love the way that you're doing things. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, this book right here, is the formula for you to start writing a book, to publish a book, and to see the value and benefits it's going to use to grow your business. Yeah. If for some reason mm-hmm. you get stuck in the process or there's a roadblock or you feel like you need some extra support, hey, by all means, I would love to support you in that journey. But even if you don't, this book has every piece of knowledge that you need to get it done on your own. I love that like that mindset. Mm-hmm. I love that approach because I do think that that's like a true value-led way to approach writing books. Mm, yeah. Mm. It goes back to something we've preached on this podcast since we started it too, that make sure you're adding value with everything you're doing, especially with that free content. There's no reason that it can't have value just because it has the word mm-hmm. free on it. No doubt. Yeah, because I feel like that's one thing that you see a lot of companies do. Like they kind of take shortcuts in the in the realm of eBooks, like especially, you know, five or six years ago as a part of the inbound marketing, you know, methodology and strategy was to have these eBooks yeah. and businesses kind of shortchanged, I think their, their audience, which is why eBooks don't perform at the rate that they used to is that they would create these eBooks mm-hmm. gated by an email and a name. And really there wasn't enough value in it. It was like, Oh, cool. You yeah, told me yep. three things that I could have read on a blog post, right? It was mm-hmm. like, where's the real <laughs> yeah. value in that? And how did that help me? Because 
I've told, I've shared this story with John uh, Chandler, but one of our, one of our big retainer clients, I remember walking into their office for the very first time and he picked up this stack of documents off of his desk and he showed it to me. And I was like, what's that? Mm. He's like, that's every blog post you guys have ever written. He's like, we were reading those to buy us time until we could afford to hire you guys. And I was like, holy crap. And he was like, all of these things basically helped us get along until we had the budget together to, to pay you guys. And I was just like, okay, wow. like investing in content is totally worth it, right? Especially if it gives mm-hmm. away, if it gives away the secret sauce. Like I have no problem giving away all of my knowledge because at the end of the day, it's going to go back to the first part of my apprehension in writing a book in the first place. I don't have enough time to do it on my own, <laughs> right? And sometimes you're still going right. to ask for support, even if you know every way to do it. Like, I could paint my own house. Am I going to do it? No. I could put my own sod in. Am I going to do it? Absolutely not. It's 106 degrees outside, right? Like, just because I, just because I know how to <laughs> do something doesn't mean I'm going to do it by myself. And the people that do, hey, man, yeah. good for them, right? It's awesome. It's, it's so true. So true. And what a powerful story, man. What what was the book publishing process like for you? I mean, from from day one on your first book to like now, now that you know everything you know, I mean, was it exciting? Was it challenging? Was it all of the above? Oh, I mean, it was very exciting, but it's very challenging. I mean, I, mean, I remember this part of why we created self-publishing school is, is and ultimately now self, self-publishing.com is, is, you're just Googling uh, around hoping that you find something that works. And and I just remember it was three days before my launch and I was getting ready to upload my PDF. And then I realized you can't upload a PDF to Amazon. <laughs> like, oh, well, that's really good to know. Uh, the book is launching in three days. Um, and so this is kind of an important piece of info that would have been nice to know. It's just right. it's tons of crazy stuff like that that you just figure out by trial and error. And you make a ton of mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. And so, so our goal is to help people avoid those mistakes, save a ton of time, save a ton mm-hmm. of money, all that stuff. Yeah. I remember. So there was a company called CD Baby that we used, obviously, in the, on the music mm-hmm. side of what we did. Yeah. And I remember oh, yeah. when Book Baby first came out, and we were yeah. like, what is this? Mm-hmm. Like, they'll, they'll help you make yep. your book be like printed and put it in Amazon and Walmart. Yeah. And like, and I was like, this is really cool. And, and obviously that's evolved like tenfold since, you know, when I first saw that come out. Oh, but, yeah. uh, you know, speaking of that, how is your company? I mean, obviously you have a lot of educational client content, but are you guys considered, are y'all a hybrid publisher? Do you guys actually help people, the publishing process and distribution? Do y'all help with that kind of stuff as well? Yeah, uh, I would say it's weird because I think we technically we could be considered a hybrid publishing company, but the main difference is we don't we don't take the royalties. Mm. Um, so I and still consider us a self publishing company. We do yeah. a lot of the stuff for people. Um, so our big thing is, all right, yeah, we're going to pair you up with a coach. We've got curriculum. We're, our goal is to save you hundreds of hours in the process, thousands of dollars in the process, and help you write and publish a better book that sells more copies that grows your business. Right. So that's the yeah. overarching goal. Now there's a lot of ways we help people do that. Um, but as of recent, we've added a lot of services. And so I kind of look at it as like final mile publishing logistics. So it's all these things that you're going to pay mm-hmm. hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars for. Um, we now just do all those things for people as part of their, uh, as part of working with us. So that's awesome. We buy them an ISBN we, um, that's in their name. Um, we have, uh, you know, create a book cover. We format the book. We publish it to Amazon. We upload, we SEO it. We do all these things. Um, to help set the book up for success and also to help them not have to do all that stuff because it's pretty tedious, time consuming and confusing. Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we, we do yeah. a lot of that stuff uh, for people. That's awesome. So what does the perfect customer look like for you? I mean, obviously this podcast episode is not to pitch anyone or sell anyone, but I mean, what is the type of person that's typically a good fit for you guys and, and what kind of services are you guys offering, you know, aspiring authors? Yeah, I think the perfect customer is someone who, um, has some traction with their business and wants to grow their business using a book like that. Those are the people we really love working with because I think we're really good at that. Um, and so um, th- they have some kind of thought leadership or experience or expertise in what they do, and they want to they want to distill that into a book. and 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 then we help them with that. and And I think what people are surprised on is we really help the business side beyond the book. Like yeah. the book is the mechanism to sure. drive change or to drive revenue or all that stuff. 
but it just parlays into so many different ways that we can help them. So that's kind of our perfect, perfect that's customer. That's cool. Do y'all, do y'all actually help write the book if someone is, doesn't consider herself a writer at all? I mean, do y'all help with the writing process? We don't. That's, that's one of the few things we don't do. Um, mm-hmm. And, and uh, mostly, I just don't believe in the business model. I think sure. it's, hard to, it's hard to predictably create happy customers. Um, I read something that I've written, the rough draft, I think it sucks, and I wrote it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and now imagine if I paid someone $30,000 yeah. um, to write for me, I'm going to be a whole lot less forgiving. And it's just, it's just hard to write a great yeah. book in someone's voice, ghostwriting. Sure. doesn't mean it can't be done, but at scale, mm-hmm. I think it's very difficult to do it at a high level That's right. and create yeah. happy customers. And so, and the price point has to be yeah. high ticket. Yeah. Oh, very, very, make very. It, yeah, to make it be good. Yeah, no doubt, absolutely. no doubt. Minimum twenty, thirty thousand yeah. dollars minimum. Yeah, um, we we and, have a, yeah. a writer that we work with, and she does it for. It's pretty bizarre. She has like non disclosure agreements. I mean, they're some of the biggest, you know, New York Times bestseller, you know, best selling authors, and she wrote their books, and like it's her. I mean, it's her book. Like when you really think about it, it's like, hey, here's the idea, and she's like, cool, and like writes it. Yeah, and it's like that just blows my mind mm-hmm. that no one will ever see like her abilities or yeah. recognize her name in that light. Yet she is the voice to, I don't know, ten plus you know best selling authors. Yeah, and I'm just like that's wild to me, you know. Yeah. and to some ex- extent that feels like you're kind of like, I don't know, jipping your audience a little bit because it's not mm-hmm. authentically you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, imagine that that's the voice and tone in your book, and then you have to later on go sell a consulting client and you can't actually emulate who you yeah. who you made yourself yeah. appear to be mm. in your in your work. I mean that's yeah. just I agree yeah. I don't think that that is sustainable for sure. Yeah. That's that's man. This is like a fun conversation. I feel like you could kind of go down so many different rabbit, you know, rabbit holes. I know. I'm like where where, yeah. where do we go cuz I have questions and then I have questions that would be good for our audience but then like I kind of just want to write a book I always have and like yeah the time thing was a big deal for me and that you know you're not gonna have time to do yeah. it start doing it yeah you're right I mean how can you I mean obviously you've talked a lot about it a little bit but maybe you can kind of give us some examples I mean how can you use books to grow your business I mean you talk about that one to many approach but do you have any yeah. specific you know examples from your, like your own journey that you could share with business owners oh gosh so many so uh, and, I, and I know we got a hack question, so I don't want to. I'm gonna, I don't yeah, wanna, right. To uh, give too much, st- yeah. st- steal the reveal. Uh, but uh, save a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I look at those three buckets. So, how to get more leads? These are people who hear about me because of my book, um, and so they might never have known about self publishing school, but they hear about published, they read published, and now they know about my business. So mm-hmm. that then, how do I get more? Use the book to get more sales. So, using the book throughout the entire kind of customer journey, journey to yeah. increase every you know. Most people have a sales funnel that goes traffic to lead to either sale or appointment to appointment to show up, to show up, to purchase. And you can improve all of those mechanisms by using a book um, in any or all parts of your sales funnel, Mm -hmm. right? And so getting more people to opt in or getting more people to show up or getting more people to do those, whatever. And then the third piece, which I think is probably what I'll mention or double click on in uh, in the hack at the end, is using a book to get more referrals. Um, so turning active customers into referrers. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I do it. Then there's all, all kinds of stuff. Like we use a free plus shipping funnel. It works unbelievably well. Uh, yeah. we, uh, you know, we've got all kinds, of, uh, all, all kinds of other ways. I mean, this is sure. my book. The first edition has brought in millions of dollars in sales for self-publishing school over the last few years. And that's why I wrote the second edition is because I'm pretty confident that it'll bring in 10 million or tens of millions of dollars in sales for self-publishing school over the next decade by just yeah. putting it as a cornerstone um, piece of the business. So, Yeah, that's cool. I really like the idea of it. You know, I can't wait to get into the referral piece because I totally nerd out on referral marketing. It's yes. something that, you know, I always ask my clients like, hey, can you kind of give me a breakdown of where your clients and leads come from? And everyone tends to lean on you know, oh, existing client relationships or word of mouth. And I'm like, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your existing like marketing spend habits. You know, like how much are you investing in paid ads? How much are you investing into, you know, um, uh, trade shows or traditional publications? And then I'll be like, cool, how much are you investing in referral marketing? And everyone's like, uh, no, what do you mean investing? Like, we'll we'll give you a hundred bucks if you send a client our way. It's like, yeah, that's not investing 
in the, mm-hmm. the, the, the business. Like that's just like the reward of it. What are you actually doing to drive it? So I'm excited to get back to that piece, but um, golly, I think I just hit a roadblock on terms of my thought. Dang it. I had a really, I had a great idea <laughs> in my head that is gone in the wind forever. Um, well, so that I don't make myself look like a fool in front of all of our listeners. Oh, I know what it was. It's come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Yay. me. Um, the, <laughs> what it was is I love the idea of giving books as gifts. Um, I, I will yeah. support an author by buying 25, 30 copies of their books. And actually, I'll send it out as a prospecting uh, methodology. So instead mm-hmm. of prospecting with the idea of let, let me send you an email, a cold email, or let me send you a uh you know a letter uh i'll actually send you like a certified mail in a, with a box that has a book in it with a little sticky note on it that just says hey you know local to town uh, we're a marketing agency i came across this book and thought it would really be helpful for your business oh, and, and, idea. and they have no idea who i am that's fine but how often are they getting something like mm-hmm. a package from a from a stranger especially from a a sales rep it's not yeah. happening right yeah. and um well, yeah. How often do you get a package right, from exactly. a friend these days? I mean, yeah. we're so digital. And so I like. literally have, um, there's a book by, I think it's uh, Michael Hyatt. It's all about mm-hmm. um, like that perfect virtual assistant, like how to cool. hire like yeah. a good virtual assistant. It's a great book. And I bought like 25 copies mm-hmm. of those specifically for that. Like mm-hmm. if I know someone who I can tell is like struggling with like managing their time, like I'll just send it to them as a little gift. Like, hey, this book has really helped me out in my mm-hmm. business journey. I think it will also be helpful for you. And uh, people really respond well to that, right? And so yeah. I, I love the idea of even creating a book for myself that we send out these, a part of our onboarding process, something that I, I took away from that automatic customer book that I spoke of earlier, was that first 90 days of onboarding is kind of critical to reducing churn in the long run, right? And so it's not very often that you hire a website design company and they send you anything physical because so many digital companies rely on digital methods of delivery yes, yes. and so right. when we onboard a new client we'll actually send them this fully branded like su- what looks like a subscription box it's completely branded they open it up it has a coffee cup it has a pen mm-hmm. it has um a notebook like a moleskin notebook okay, it has like a phone pen. charger i mean it's got some sweet like really cool swag and uh it'd be sweet to add oh yeah there's a little beefy cup um it'd be really cool to add my own book in there right and be and like Put a little sticky note like in one of my favorite pages and highlight something and be like, hey, this right here was pivotal pivotal yes. in my business. Yes. You should check this out. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, holy crap, like that's super mm-hmm. value add, right? Mm-hmm. So I think this is a good transition point to our business growth hack. All right, Chandler, what kind of business growth hack do you have for us today, man? Yeah, uh, so... Uh, my my business growth hack would be it's it's very similar on the heels of what you were just saying is once you write and publish a book um, give a so you, maybe for the phrase book is the new business card I think a book yep. is better than the business card because uh, if you give someone mm-hmm. a business card they're going to throw it away within twenty four yeah. hours like, let's <laughs> yeah. just be real uh, exactly. but if you give someone a book they're going to keep that book and every time it's in their office it's in their home every time they see that book they think of you and so mm-hmm. it, kind of similar to what you were just yeah. saying it's give. Every new customer that you get, and maybe even prospect, depending on what customers are worth to you, what your cost to acquire, how much you're willing to spend to acquire mm-hmm. customers, all that stuff. Um, but at a minimum, give two to every new customer and say, hey, here's one for you. And here's one for anyone you know who needs help with insert Ooh. the problem that you solve, right? I'm gonna give you this book. Uh, it just comes with one wow. string attached. That's that. You gotta give it to someone who you know is gonna help, right? Yeah. And so now all of a sudden, you've just turned a customer into an active referrer. Uh, and they're not saying... Hey, right. go go! You should go do business with Andrew and Beefy Marketing, right? They're saying, hey, you should check out this book. I think it'll be really helpful. Uh, exactly and right. so they're adding value. You're making mm-hmm. them look good. And the same way you just use the example. So Michael Hyatt is a an advisor for self publishing school and a mentor for me personally. Um, and so w- we talk a lot of strategy on just the future of self publishing school and stuff like that. The future of self publishing. Um, and, and, you know, he comes from a traditional publishing world, but exactly what you just did, right? You introduced someone to Michael Hyatt by giving them yep. his executive assistant book, right? They That's read right. that. They say, oh, this is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I might want to work with this guy, right? And so you're adding value to someone else through the book. Um, and, and when you give copies to every customer, 
um, you enable them to do so. So giveaway to customers. We also just, I give it away like crazy. My yeah. copy of my book, um, mm -hmm. at speaking events, at all kinds of stuff. It's, it's uh, really, really powerful. And it yeah, yeah. That's, brings that's in customers. Man. Yeah, I mean, it's the power of reciprocity too, right? Like yeah. when you, not only am I delivering value for someone who technically doesn't help me at all, like I'm not making money off Michael Hyatt, unfortunately, you know, but uh, it doesn't matter, right? Like I genuinely <laughs> believe that that book helped me. It can help someone else. But then there's that power of reciprocity, right? Like they feel yeah. like, wow, he did something nice for me. He was generous to me. He supported me on my journey. I'm going to do it in return, whether it's that person continuing to purchase for me or them sending out a referral source, whatever. I personally know that I'm 100% willing to invest in my existing customers because they're my best they're my best source of new mm -hmm. pros or new customers, right? So Chandler, this conversation, man, yeah. was a blast to have. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor for you to promote oh, everything yeah. you've got going on and uh, let, our, uh, let our listeners know yeah. how they can support you, how they can follow you, and what you would like them to do. Yeah. So I'd say two best next steps. If you're listening to this, if you feel like this was helpful and you'd love to dive more into writing a book, publishing a book, using a book to grow your business, all that good stuff, um, there's two two next steps that might be helpful for you. First one, grab a copy of my new book. It's called Published, The Proven Path from Blank Page to 10,000 Copies Sold. Um, you can grab it on Amazon. You listen to podcasts, so you probably like audio content. Um, you can grab the Audible version. Um, I narrate the audio Audible version, so it's kind of like having a... We can just keep the conversation going um, on the Audible version. And then uh, yeah. on that note, if you'd like a free physical copy of this book, so for the first 50 people, um, I, I'd love to give you a free physical copy of the book. No strings attached, no shipping and handling, no nothing. Um, just go to the link. It's publishedbook.com forward slash growth. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, kind of an ode to this podcast. Uh, and so this is a, 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 so this is a link first 50 people from this podcast. Just tell me where to ship it. Um, I'll pay for everything. Um, Publishedbook.com forward slash growth. So that's the first best place. Second best place um, is if you're interested in working with us or, imp or, you know, kind of having us help put together a plan for your book, you can go to self-publishingschool.com forward slash apply, um, book a call with the team. We'd be happy to chat with you about your goals for your book, your next steps, implement, all that good stuff. That's awesome. Chandler, thanks, man. We will see you guys next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Business Growth Hacks podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast so you never miss an episode. To get more marketing tips and tricks, follow Beefy Marketing on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Beefy Marketing. And to take your business to the next level, check out our website at www.beefymarketing.com.